research? The question to be answered in this research is, does the solutions of housings provided by the Ministry of Housings are effective and satisfying to fulfill the citizens' requirements and the increasing demand for housing due to the high population growth in Bahrain? And will the use of flexible architectural interventions overcome this issue? The research aim is to look into the possibility of using flexible architectural interventions to solve the housing issues in Bahrain. This will be done by using in-depth understanding and knowledge of the expressed issues related to the current housing projects to provide access to future studies regarding the development of housings in Bahrain. To look into the already existing solutions provided and to provide a thorough understanding of the various techniques and strategies of flexible architectural interventions to decide if they are appropriate for the use in Bahrain social housing. The literature covers the housing theories and social housings and their existence throughout history. The literature also covers the residential satisfaction by using the three main theories of housing knee theory, psychological construct theory, and housing defect theory. And the residential satisfaction measurement was done based on these four components. The literature also digs deep into the notion of flexible architecture, which is the change or be changed based on a certain requirement or a certain situation, where it has been initiated by modernism. And it allows a high level of choice and personalization by providing open-ended solutions through the freedom of control. The literature also highlights the main characteristics of flexibility, which include mobility, transformability, and adapt adaptability. By using strategies of flexibility like the plug-in, the sum and split, the common rooms, and by, by the use of moving walls, folding, and neutral spaces. And it also highlights the elements of flexibility that can be manipulated to achieve change. For example, walls, roofs, furniture, and structure. The literature also covers a set of case studies from Germany, Netherlands, and France of houses and apartments uh, where the apartments and houses were, a were being able to change into different spaces by moving the walls. plans where it gives the occupants the choice to change and design the, the apartments or houses as they wish and by the use of modular plug-ins for flexibility where it contains various units for living such as bathroom kitchen it also allows um, the family to modify their space based on the number of occupants and it allows flexible future extensions of space the literature also covers the flexible architecture implications and how it solved many issues related to space shortages. It also maintains inclusive design and it has been adapted by many countries that lack the availability of space with high population densities as a solution for housing issues. By researching about this topic, it was found that there was not enough data and literature regarding the effectiveness of social housing in Bahrain and the implications of flexible architecture to solve the social housing issues in Bahrain. Therefore, this paper will attempt to fill the gap by collecting data from the users and occupants regarding these social houses and the way they live in to seek the possibility of implementing flexible tactics to solve the issues related to population rise, shortages of space and occupant satisfaction. This research is exploratory research. It uses qualitative methods to provide different aspects to a problem and it aids in developing concepts and deeply analyzes the social housing issue. The sample population of this research is 20 participants of Bahraini members of the community that have a family and are eligible for the social housing based on the financial and social criteria. The sampling used is non-probability sampling. To have a fair sample, five participants of four different locations of the housing projects were selected. The data collected was done using a link and a QR code distributed over social media platforms and participants with the eligible criteria scanned the code and were interviewed. The data collected from the interviews was recorded and transcribed. And for ethical reasons, a clear permission from the participants was taken and the participants' names and phone numbers were kept anonymous. Each interview took an average of 20 to 30 minutes of time. The use of interviews as a research instrument allowed direct control over the flow of the conversation and the questions and allowed more flexible data gathering. It consisted of five main questions and other follow-up questions in which the questions were unstructured and open-ended or closed-ended questions, more like a casual conversation, to get thorough answers from the participants based on their experiences and thoughts. Some diagrams were used as a simple explanation to help the participants who might not be familiar with the notion of flexible architecture to understand new concepts and help educate the community about new interventions. These are the five interview questions and their validation, where validity was established by comparing the interview questions with the content of the objectives and the research question. The data analysis was done using in vivo software, where the interviews were subdivided by themes 
that include the location, the main issues, the spaces mostly used in the social housing, the most requested changes made in these social housing, and the previous knowledge and acceptance about the flexible interventions. The data collected was grouped into themes and in vivo book, and each theme had its description. The data gathered from the interview showed high dissatisfaction rates regarding the social house's design. Almost all mentioned that the reason for their dissatisfaction is its small size, and mostly this was stated by occupants living in East Head. Almost all the participants had no previous knowledge related to flexible houses except two, and most of them did not agree upon the idea of flexible houses, and most of them showed concern regarding the efficiency and the possibility to host these new interventions, as they might not be well maintained. The issue is related to mostly the size of the houses and the size of the spaces, so flexible architectural interventions cannot add up to the size tremendously, but it can be done in a less costly manner if planned earlier, or by using the plug-in techniques as explained in the case studies of the literature for the extension of rooms or the addition, the easy addition of some rooms. The findings regarding the possibility of using flexible housings in Bahrain showed that the flexible housing seemed to be one of the best solutions to the issues experienced by the occupants, but the lack of knowledge regarding these interventions stand as an obstacle for its implementation, especially if they would use the plug-in technique for the customization of spaces as per needed by the family members, or also the use of the modular technique in order for future extensions if needed, and also uh, the use of uh, pre-planned uh, f finishing choices in order to provide occupants with greater flexibility and personalization in their spaces since most of the occupants opt to change their finishings once they receive these social houses. The participants showed more interest in vertical housing techniques in order to increase the total build-up area of the houses, but they also had concerns regarding the horizontal area to be compatible to fit all the required furniture pieces efficiently. Regarding the the occupant satisfaction, most of them had an issue with the sizes of the house. They considered it to be small, and even the number of rooms were not enough, since the average number of bedrooms of the MOH housings are five. And most family members, average Bahraini families, are up to six family members. Most spaces used in the living room were also too small to fit the furniture. The ideas and opinions of the Bahraini locals interviewed with the big spacious houses that contain huge living spaces and inner courts dates back to the old traditional houses designs of Bahrain. Since they were spacious, open, and most of them contained inner courts that aided in enhancing the quality of natural light, provided privacy, expensivity, and huge living space, which contradicts with the current characteristics of the houses provided by the Ministry of Housing. They aim for and prefer larger houses too because they think of their children's future and their living spaces within the house. They were not concerned with the adaptability of the houses as much as the size, so vertical housings can easily provide extra space for the future of their children. As an aim to reduce the space taken to build the house, three alternate interventions were proposed to check their acceptance during the interview. And the interviewees showed uh, and mostly agreed with vertical architecture, and they strongly refused small architectural interventions. And they, were, they had mild refu refusal regarding the flexible architecture. As an attempt to reduce the surface area and compare to the proposed flexible uh, intervention. In conclusion, more extensive solutions should rapidly develop as the space resource is running short as the time passes, and more problems will arise due to the high demand of housings. And the people within this field need to look deeper into the quality of the lives of the people living in the houses, um, and look into researching other solutions extensively like the vertical housings that was highly agreed by the Bahraini citizens compared to other interventions. The notion of mass production of houses should come to an end and be replaced by more new sustainable interventions for the betterment of the community and the resources available. This is the list of references used in this presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay. Uh, next presentation. A methodology to assess the capacity of neighborhood to accommodate modest of active aging based on sharing housing, Malaga, Spain, as a study case. A paper written by Carlos Rosa Jiménez, Rubén Mora Esteban, and Sergio Reyes Corredera by the University of Malaga. Introduction in 2050, it's estimated that the share of the world population aged 65 and over will be 16%, and 25% people. 
people living in Europe and North America could be 65 or older. Countries with aging population must take steps to adapt public programs to the growing proportion of older people, including by improving the sustainability of social security and pension system and establishing universal health and long-term care system. The problem of older people's unwanted loneliness. In many cases, living in unwanted loneliness is due to situations of economic vulnerability. Spain has a structural problem of a lack of rental housing, which is particularly acute for young people. This situation contrasts with the fact that elderly people living alone live in housing that is oversized for their needs. The creation of the neighborhood cooperative for older people to solve both problems. The neighborhood cooperative for the elder B and C E is a model designed to prevent forced loneliness, promote aging in place, and increase the supply of long term rental housing. The members temporarily transfer ownership of their homes with an initial repayment period of 10 years so that part of them are used by the members to live in groups of three or four members, freeing out the rest of the home. The aim of this research is to develop a statistical methodology to assess the predisposition of neighborhood to adopt the NCE model by means of statistical parameters. In this way, the result of this research will help public administration of social services and support for the elderly to implement new models that facilitate aging in place and to offer alternatives to the lack of rental housing. Both are model designed for people with a certain economic power, as they require significant financial investment in the case of senior co-housing or financial investment to obtain support services, as in the case of Village. To locate the most optical areas for the implementation of NCE as a model of active aging, in the study case of Malaga, Spain, four steps are carried out. First, definition of features in case study. Two, definition of specific indicators to the location of the potential NCE deployment areas. Three, definition of general indicators for the location of urban areas that facilitate aging in place. And four, assessment of indicators according bias criteria. The city of Malaga is located in southern Spain. The Baile Miraflores district is one of the 11 districts into which the city of Malaga is administratively divided. The district has a registered population of uh, 61,569 inhabitants, distributed among 24,388 uh, families. The number of people with 65 or more living alone in single-person households is 3,220, the 25% of the total population over uh, 65 years. The Baila Miraflores district is made up of 29 neighborhoods. The study focuses on Amarra, Hazard Campillo, Las Chapas, Los Castillejos, Los Villones, and Nueva Málaga. Definition of specific indicators for the location of potential NC deployment areas. In age, according to the literature, literature, we can find several population groups. Young seniors has a greater predisposition to cohabitation models such as co-housing. Elderly correspond of the sector of the population linked to the autonomous elderly and those who are retired. And older than STGLs correspond to the sector of the population with potentially greater dependency needs and where their personal autonomy decreases considerably. In order to determine the potential area of implementation of this model, the indicator in this tablet has been defined. Loneliness rates, percentage of people ages 65 or plus living alone as a proportion of the population ages 65 plus in the census tract, training level, income level, housing and housing rental. We select two indicators, a number and distribution of surrounding facilities. In the housing selection criteria, we found the following endowment priority for the people, proximity to public transport, markets, clinics, part, and good social services. And still slopes. According to international standards, slopes suitable for older people should not exceed 6%. For the assessment of the potential location indicator on the C, this model, we established two levels of characterization. In principle, in this table, the three age groups are differentiated. A55, A65, and A80. 
The assessment of the indicator according bias criteria we differentiate between this the, this indicator according to these tables. In the result, you can see the area with a, a A level or high level of the indicator in this case in the 55 to 64 year old people. Uh, between 65 and 79 year old people and more than 80 year old people. The lonely map show presented for elderly people uh, living alone mostly above 40%. Only one of the sector had a lower percentage. Exceptionally, one of the sector has a very high percentage. Uh, however, it doesn't correspond to the set of with high percentage of A80 or A65, and there is no predominance of dwelling with three bedrooms or more. So it may be a sector of a younger population that may be a small uh, rented dwelling. Income level, uh, the income level range um, is from 20,000 and 25,000 uh, euros. Most of the neighborhood is associated at A level. In training level, regarding the level of education of the population over 65 years of age, there are areas with high level of illiteracy or primary education. The selected area with uh, A level have, in most cases, zero illiteracy or primacy education values. In housing, the value of dwelling with three or more bedrooms are high and range from 64 to 96%, indicating a broad willingness of the selected, of the selected neighborhood to share housing. The level A area is located in the northern sector of the study area. The neighborhood has a rental market with average price of 11 euros uh, per square meters and average value of uh, 976 euros. The area under analysis has the square rental market, most of which is located in the northern sector. Therefore, the constitution of a NCE would allow this market to increase. In terms of social cultural facilities, the study area has come covered the minimum values. The neighborhood is well equip equipped with two hospitals and one health center covering the entire study area and the wide range of pharmacies. In addition, the study area has three associations for the elderly. However, the proximity to the green areas with a distance of 200 meters is a problem. The study area has a slope of less than 6%, which makes it suitable setting for active aging, with the exception of the western sector with a, a steeper slope. The population bias, if we apply population bias, we find two areas for A80 rated very high and higher, two areas with A65 rated very high and medium, and one area for A55 rated medium. Unwanted loneliness bias. However, if the bias is fundamentally people living in unwanted loneliness, then the sector with potentially greater needs could be M1 and M2, that are dominated by the highest percentages of the A80 population and therefore more prone to dependency and P1 being a mixed sector would be potentially more suitable. If the bias is toward favorable environmental condition, then the best area for the cooperative would correspond the red sector within the area of work, which in addition to being close to social facilities, health centers and pharmacies, is located near a large green area. The main innovation of this research is to relay the environmental characteristics of active aging in place to the areas that are potentially most valued for the implementation of a cooperative model based on home sharing intended for people living in unwanted loneliness and who don't have sufficient economic resources. The purpose of the study is to identify areas that are conducive to a potential location. It's a relatively easy system to analyze the potentiality of the existing system to propose housing sharing models based on neighborhood cooperative system beyond the housing sharing program proposed by the United States or in the networks. It's structured in the superposition of a general model that partially assesses the level of friendliness of the design space and all the most sensitive group, children, pregnant women, with assisting of a specific indicator for the proposed CME model. But there is still some limitation in the result. The first one is that the result don't assess the degree of forced loneliness as they require a significant amount of field work. Therefore, we can only estimate a certain principle of proportionality to the percentage of people living in loneliness. Future research could therefore establish a comparative framework of these results 
with fieldwork in order to assess the degree of reliability of the methodology provided. This article focuses on the problem of how to identify the area of the city most likely to potentially implement a cooperative model based on home sharing, a methodology based on the superposition of two systems of indicators they propose. This article shows the result project, project neighborhood cooperative for older people for active aging in place, implication for improving for living big city. Funded by the Consejería de Transformación Económica e Industrial Conocimiento Universidad de la Junta de Andalucía. Okay, and now the last presentation of the first part. Hello, my name is Hale Demirci, and I'm going to present Utopian Riots Dominating Housing Actors in Turkey and Their Design Approaches. The image on the screen shows the structure of this study, beginning with the housing need, introducing token riots, and examination of projects, concluding with suggestions. To begin with, I want to emphasize the importance of needs and its relation with shelter, or in other saying, housing as we know today. Over time, as humans progress, their needs change, along with design and construction of their dwellings. As shown in the theory about basic human needs of Maslow, considering there are five levels of needs, most basic and necessary three are related with shelters. Nowadays, the need for affordable housing becomes a problem due to the urbanization movements, population growth, economical reasons, and migration. Those who migrate to the city first wanted to meet their need for shelter, which led to the establishment of slums in cities. Turkey no, is no exception in this manner. Population, which has grown almost four times until 1945, transformed Turkey from an agriculture-dominated country to a country that most of its population living in cities. Apartments have emerged to meet the needs for housing as household numbers shrink because of westernization movement. The systematic construction of multi-story houses resulted in cities growing vertically instead of horizontally. When it comes to mass housing production in Turkey, two dominating actors are Toki and riots in means of economic power. Toki is a governmental agency responsible for large-scale mass housing projects to provide affordable houses. Rights, on the other hand, aim to generate income for investors and their design approach focuses on enhancing the value of the property. Both parties considered as viable solutions for providing affordable housing due to their economic power. Being a subsidiary of Turkey, Emlak Konut is one of the biggest actors in Turkey's housing market. In our study, two actors are compared in means of site planning, design aspects and engineering aspects. Four selected examples were chosen from the province of Ankara, two of which belongs to Toki and other two belongs to Emlak Konut. The comparison in the selected projects aim to give some insight about mass housing development aspects and propose implementation of design elements that can improve the housing standards. Tokyo Project Settlement, which built in phases and phase 15 is still under construction. Tokyo Turka Settlement's fifth phase finished in 2006. Both projects name after the villages they set up near. Settlements are located near Ankara Eskişehir Road. In the Google Earth image, Tokyo Project Settlement is marked in blue and Turka Settlement marked in red. Emlak Konut Başkent Emlak Konutları Settlement is in Oran Çankaya and Koordinat Çayolu Settlement is in Ümitköy Çankaya. In the Google Earth image, Başkent Emlak Konutları Settlement is marked in blue and Koordinat Çayolu Settlement is marked in red. In order to make comparison between the selected projects, if the criteria under consideration is well, which means completely or mostly fulfilled in the sample, it is graded at, as good with three stars. If the defined criteria is provided at a partial level, then graded as moderate with two stars. Finally, if the criteria is provided at a low or insufficient level, it is graded as not sufficient with one star. 
After the grading processes of each selected project is finished, the evaluations were brought together and turned into a table. To sum up the conclusions, Toki's project showed that in site planning aspects, design projects usually are built outside the city because of the limitation and cost of the land resulted socially isolated communities, tends to build high-rise buildings and apartment blocks in smaller plots that can accommodate more people, designs limited public spaces providing only basic amenities and essential infrastructure, is being criticized for building large-scale projects that overpower the surrounding areas, the projects appear monolithic. Emlak Konut projects show that in site planning aspects, design projects have focused on building housing projects in the city center, prefers to develop larger plots with lower density building, include larger public spaces, provide site and amenities and access to cultural and commercial centers, are designed to be in proportion to their surroundings. Both parties' security approach is to implement security measures. Chosen projects show that in design aspects, Toki is often criticized for their generic and standardized approach, lack of diversity, often designed with standardized unit types with minimum space instead of customizing the needs of residents. Usually building face each other, causing lack of privacy within the units, the shadow fall to each other, causes less nature light to enter. Chosen projects show that in design aspects, emlak projects are known for their diverse architectural design. They collaborated with famous architectural firms, including Zahadit Architects and Tamannola Architects, offers a variety of unit types and sizes to meet the diverse needs of residents, prioritizes natural green spaces, offers spaces with aesthetics and functionality, offers panoramic views of the surrounding that don't see directly each other, designs product projects, proportions of the rooms are often flexible, projects maximize natural light. Toki projects in engineering aspects had been the object of criticism because of low quality finishing materials, has been criticized for using outdated construction materials in terms of energy efficiency, relies on traditional methods resulting in high energy consumption, structural designs provided it itself durable as several earthquakes and in several cities including February 2023 earthquakes tries to keep keep costs in minimum offers the lowest price possible for targeted group emlak konut projects in engineering aspects usually uses high quality materials and implement measures to reduce environmental impact Project prioritize sustainability and environmentally responsible design, integrating global green building standards such as LEED and BREAM, utilizes passive design strategies to reduce the need for mechanical system, places a strong emphasis on earthquake resistance, using high-end materials and techniques. Coming up the suggestion part, in accordance to this study, for improvements uh, in Toki project, first of all, the settlements area should be preferred closer, closer to the city center for the integration of residents with the city. If it is not possible, there should be a way to develop these areas to provide some benefits to private sector from government or treasury. By this way, socialization possibilities can be improved. Projects should be designed in a way that respects and reflects local values, historical context, and urban fabric, rather than adopting a generic and standardized approach. In addition to that, giving import importance to open, semi-open, and closed social areas and reducing the density of settlements will have a positive effect on psychological well-being of the residents. A design approach of combining high-rise buildings with some low-rise buildings with a flow can create a sense of openness, hence the feel of belonging. The market research should be made before the design processes to better understand the needs of residents. Both the settlement and the houses should be designed in accordance to these needs. 
Settlement design process should include light and shading analysis. Even though there are some lessons learned from the previous construction about material quality, more up-to-date materials should be used in construction. Green and sustainable design principles should be integrated to project as a factor of architectural design as well as the economical aspect. Finally, academic collaborations from several disciplines such as sociology, architecture, urban design and development should be made in order to follow innovations and approaches in the world. Thank you for listening. If there is any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay. Um... Okay, now we are going to, to begin the first um, round table. I'm gonna make a brief, a brief presentation. In the first part, identify two, two thematics. The first one is a specific problem of housing and the elderly, these two papers. And uh, the second thematic is the problem of the social housing in two different countries. The first one is the flexible architecture in Bahrain by Fatema Maseki and Fai al Khalifa. And the second one is talking on rates, dominating housing uh, in the case of Turkey. Um, I have uh, three questions for every, every presenters. But firstly, I would like to know if, 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 if anyone have any question for any one of the, the, presenters, the presenters before my question. I have one question, uh, doctor, but uh, let it be after your questions. Okay, thank you. Good. The, the first question is for uh, uh, Tokyo Ray, the Meeting Housing Action in Turkey, the last one presentation by Hail Demirci and Renge Sanger. According to your presentation, I have a doubt. Uh, rates uh, is a private actor uh, whose homes are for low income people or not uh it's uh hello can you hear me yes yes uh rights are uh, actor and actor uh, uh, excuse me rights are actors uh, who provide low to middle income group or high to middle income group it depends on the uh, you know the um, site uh, and the city of the project, but uh, right usually prefer uh, to build in Istanbul or such places that the land cost is more uh, and, you know, the selling options are better because they aim to provide income for the investors. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, the second question is for Fatema Sedik. Uh, are you here, Fatema? Or yes. Or, okay. Yes, hello. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, according to your intervention, solution flexible architecture is not well for married housing applicants because they need more space for living uh, their children. Uh, could you give us more information about the number of members of a family? And what happened with non-married applicants or young couple? Is my my doubt your representation? Uh, yes, uh, these Ministry of Housing projects are provided for Bahraini families, people uh -huh. who are married and who have children, and who uh -huh. are planning to bring more children. It's provided by loans and for low-income people, people with a range of income. So uh -huh. when they get provided by these, the average Bahraini family is, is a quite big families. So they have an average of a minimum six members. Six members. So they keep planning for future plans. So these future plans are hectic and they, they, they cause problems in, in future extensions when they try to build for their uh, more room for their uh, children and even for their children future. As known, in, in Bahraini families, uh, they they prefer to have their children around them, even after marriage. So they usually have the same um, thought of having the old house with big families. So they keep thinking of extensions and and bigger rooms. So if they they try to to 
to use the plugins and the flexibles. So they have pre-planning for the extensions from before. It would be less, um, quite less hectic for them, less costly, and even um, it would be more structure friendly to these houses if all these things were pre-planned. But as uh, I have explained, the lack of knowledge regarding these flexible interventions to the Bahraini community and, and to, the, to the people in that field uh, is the major cause for um, why it's, it has not been implemented yet. Okay, okay, fantastic. Good. Um, for uh, Javier, Javier Castellano, I have a question for you. Uh, how the elder people's particular needs and habits have influenced in the refurbished project of housing? Good morning. Um, yes, uh, in, in Malaga City, when we were making the surveys around uh, related to the needs of the population, the elderly, we found out um, some specific rooms or spaces that they can uh, share or they are work they prefer to share with the rest for co-living in the same apartment because uh, for the people they want the first thing is they want to keep they want to keep the privacy in the in their rooms inside and have to, enough uh, furniture elements that they can be uh, alone when they want and to share uh, uh, different rooms on different spaces the living room dining room the kitchen and we found out also that the kitchen sometimes they will need to to be shared in a different relationship with the with the living room. It happened the same with the lectures or ludic ludic uh, rooms. Even they demonstrate some interest to reading, for instance, to reading in uh, in relations to uh, or in contact with the rest of the of the of the people. So this is very interesting because in this case we have to design a, a apartment that can be flexible and uh, allowing them to get some kind of living in private, but when they want, they can share room uh, and this kind of activities for ludic reading. Um, this is also interesting in case when they rent, uh, when they rent an apartment, you know, when we join two or uh, three people in the same, uh, apartment because they can rent the, the spare others. In this apartment, we can find this kind of ludic, uh, uh, more open for reading, for interchange with the rest of the community, and then we can create some kind of co-housing. This is, uh, I think, the surveys from the population are have been very interesting because Malaga is not the same that uh, Spain is not the same than Denmark, for you know, for this kind of activities. So we need to to uh, to know very well the needs of the population okay thank you very much uh so uh, another question yeah thank you uh, i will try to uh, give my questions quickly uh, to uh, fatima sadiq uh, i would like uh, to ask her um uh, you were you was talking about uh, dissatisfaction uh, I mean, uh, the dissatisfaction, uh, how could you uh, uh, delineate this? Uh, is it only because of the space or maybe the dissatisfactions come because of the, uh, of the some uh, other issues like uh, uh, wrong environmental design, uh, not respecting the respond to the environment in the design, also making the people uh, dissatisfied, and uh, you was uh, talking about the uh, small uh, architecture or a small building. Uh, I want to ask how much a small is too small for for Bahraini people. Uh, I didn't understand this. I mean, did you have any data, any basic uh, uh, data about the minimum uh, uh, area of of the family? since the families are very uh, big, as you said. Uh, the, those things were, were not clear for me in your presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, regarding the dis dissatisfaction for the occupants, uh, it was measured uh, using the literature by using um, 
the residential satisfaction measurement based on four components by um, Umrego and Aragons, where uh, many aspects of dissatisfaction was measured. And the high uh, dissatisfaction characteristics noted in the Bahraini families weren't only regarding the space, but were also regarding the finishings, since they always had to uh, return back and change the finishes. Uh, more dissatisfactions even regarding the quality of the materials and even with the space planning. Uh, so it is not mostly regarding space and regarding the small architecture um, as, as, a, as an initiation to, to provide alternatives to the flexible architecture during the interviews. Uh, I have provided the interviewees with two alternative um, solutions to the, these issues, which is more architecture, which means uh, the, the, in, the use, use of the small areas uh, and vertical architecture. So they already had an issue regarding the small spaces. Uh, I provided them with uh, examples for small architecture, uh, which are similar to the ones used in Japan. And uh, uh, although they are fit for one person, for example, it can ha uh, bring uh, one room for one person into half uh, by using vertical uh, space um, uh, division in, inside a room instead of the horizontal. But uh, they, they refused, it strongly refused this idea of small architecture and interior planning within the, the spaces. Uh, as I said, it dates back to the old Bahraini houses and mostly the old Arabic houses for since they were so spacious and were so open. So, so they, they strongly refused this idea. I hope I have answered your question. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, okay, and another question, please, for uh, Hale uh, Demirci. Uh, I want to ask her uh, if uh, you have identified the income level uh, for the for the people uh, in uh, Turkey, or I mean, you divide them to different strata. Uh, the, if this uh, is related to what you said about the about, about the things, or no, you didn't uh, consider that. Uh, middle and uh, low income group refers to, you know, the uh, average uh, pay for people who are workers, basically, and two people are working in a family, so they can afford uh, such houses uh, to be identified as low to middle income group and other uh, low to middle income group or low, high to middle income group people are uh, more uh, like working in private sector earning more kind of way you know uh, if you know what i mean i don't know if i can yeah. say yes it. yes uh, i understand you but uh, i was waiting to see uh, some uh, data to identify what, who are the low income people, because this is different from country to country. Uh, mm -hmm. And you, you should have some reference to identify uh, the low mm -hmm. income means from this uh, annual income uh -huh. to this annual income. In this case, the things will be more clear for us uh, how uh, the ability of the of the people to 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 acquire this kind of building. Yeah, I get I you. I think, yeah, I think I should uh, add this uh, to my paper. Uh, thank you for suggesting that. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, uh, doctor. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, another question? Uh, okay, so we are gonna begin with the, the second part. Uh, we have got uh, four presentation, uh, only one in YouTube video. Uh, so according to the, the schedule, the first one is uh, the housing archetype in the work of Paulo Mendes da Rocha by Sebastian Larriva Novo. Is Sebastian Larriva here with us? Uh, no, it's not, it's not here. Okay. So the, the next presentation, I'm going to share uh, the, one moment, please. 
Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosuzila Sohaimi uh, from University of Utara, Malaysia. So, my topic is about the un-Malaysian uh, young professional um, in urban area making a housing decision towards sustainability. So, basically, this topic is to discover or to answer uh, what is the tendency of young professional uh, to de uh, in Malaysia to decide uh, to own a house uh, will they uh, be more inclined to uh, economic, social, or environmental perspective. So, uh, this is my uh, content of presentation, introduction, literature review, research method, finding, and conclusions. So, for the introduction here, uh, sustainable development goal uh, is, a, is the global uh, goal were adopted uh, by the United Nations in 2015 as action to end poverty, uh, protect the planet and uh, to make sure that by 2030 um, all people enjoy peace and prosperity and that development must balance between uh, social, economic and environmental sustainability so in my study uh, housings need to be addressed uh, by looking into three uh, this triple perspective yeah? uh, of social environmental and economy in the social perspective uh, housing is a uh, function as a uh, poverty and culture production uh, family and childhood developments and and a, a place uh, that provides safe uh, comfort well-being and protection and in economic perspective uh, housing is function to help uh, to creating a job and to uh, stimulating a productivities in uh, economic sector while in econ in environmental perspective housing generates uh, environmental uh, impact such as energy consumption uh, uh, transportation activities uh, so that's why how we relate housing into three these three pillar okay <clears throat> for the literature review here okay sustainability is often uh referred to this three pillar yeah environmental uh, social and economic however uh some uh, or previous scholar emphasized on the uh, certain pillar such as environmental so uh, the definition of the sustainability uh, by Brulins and Commission has predominance uh, accepted yeah uh, which mentioned that development uh, that's meet to uh, that's meet the, the current uh, necessity without compromising the future generation ability to meet their needs and uh, with considering um, the, between environmental, social and economy, which is they are not only focused to one pillar. They should uh, 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 take into account this three pillar. All right. Sustainability in housing. In previous study, uh, the sustainability in housing is referred to housing that uh, ensuring a roof overhead of housing disadvantage uh, uh, eco eco efficient housing well locations of housing to improve uh, loca uh, to improve uh, location locational um, amenities for example yeah but some scholar debated uh, that housing affordability should be defined with merging social environmental and economy by combine by combinations uh, sustainability and housing uh, affordability is considered as novel study and in Malaysia is very little studies in Malaysia exist on the housing decision towards sustainability. Okay, so uh, for the research method, 
this study apply uh, the mixed method quant uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, research approach um, in my study they have a three research uh, objective uh, yeah, research objective or all research question first in economy perspective we uh, I, uh, we, we, we ask to what extent does the cost of living influence housing affordability decision so we look uh, this uh, research question uh, by uh, quantitative we, we do a survey uh, we distribute the survey to the young professional and the analysis applied in this research question is cash flow uh, cash budget flow analysis and housing eligibility uh, simulation analysis and second research question is how the social uh, aspect uh, influence housing affordability decision so this uh, research question we uh, we obtained by the qualitative uh, from the uh, in-depth interview so we apply the thematic analysis same goes to the uh, third research question uh, it's about the what is the environment aspect in housing affordability decision so this uh, apply the same method uh, and also the same uh, analysis uh, approach yeah? we apply the uh, qualitative and thematic analysis so based on our study uh, okay, the result of the study explained the three dimensions uh, parallel with the concept of SDG, which uh, is comprised economic, social, and environment perspective. First, we look into uh, the economy perspective first. All right, in economy perspective, actually, housing affordability is uh, narrowed into capability of household income to meet the house housing costs and uh, others household expenditure so in my study i apply the residual income model so this residual income model we apply uh, to measure uh, the the remains the remains a uh, balance that they afford to buy the house okay so from the table show the residual income uh, after deducted from the monthly household expenditure but excludes a monthly housing cost for three group so the here here a uh, result show that uh, b40 group uh, was underprivileged as they only uh, be able bear the a monthly housing cost uh, up to 680 ringgit or usd 161 uh, usd after allocated for the uh, another household expenditure and meanwhile for the m40 group uh, have more privilege compared to b40 uh, but cannot match uh, t20 and the table also show us that uh, an estimation of the household price and monthly household installment after uh, computed by the home loan calculator malaysia so from this uh, simulation, we, we do the simulation. From this simulation, from uh, found that B40 group was only eligible to uh, uh, to to purchase or to buy a house price up to 150,000 ringgit Malaysia, while uh, M40 and T20 are uh, predictable to eligible uh, to uh, predict to eligible. Uh, to purchase house price uh, 650,000 uh, and 1.3 million ringgit Malaysia uh, respectively. So in this case, uh, clearly show that B40 group is negatively impact to the, uh, uh, the income. Yeah? Okay, next we go to the, uh, this we, we did the same key uh analysis Senki diagram yeah uh, so because we want to know um the allocation for their household income so um the Senki diagram show the flow of expenditure among the three income group and then the result show that all the three group uh, reported the highest spending flow uh, for household expenditure and followed by transportation costs okay next 
uh, result. Okay. Uh, this one is the housing decision of the social and environmental perspective. Uh, this clearly show that um, housing decision of social and environment perspective divided into uh, three. We found uh, based our thematic analysis, we found that the young professional uh, only focus to this three things. Yeah? Uh, they are considered about this three things to this to to uh, housing decision. First is about the safety of uh safety of a neighborhood okay they want to make sure that their 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 their, their house uh safe for the kid and for their uh household and second is about the location uh we found that uh the young professional will buy the house uh about 20 um up to 20 kilometers from uh between house and their works uh workstation or workplace and third is about the clean environment. They are, they are considered about the clean environments um, when they are, uh, decide to, push, to purchase the house. Okay. Uh, in conclusions here, the young professional consider economic issue or affordability factor to be the most important element when uh, deciding uh, whether to buy or to buy a home. And while for environmental and societal variable are, are the next, right? And the finding clearly demonstrate that a B40 group was underprivileged uh, because this group could only afford to pay uh, for housing bill each month, month uh, each month up to uh, 680 ringgit Malaysia or 161 USD when other household expenses were taken into account yeah and b40 enjoy uh their remaining monthly household income of about uh 3080 ringgit roughly half of what a t20 had left over so housing affordability still presents a issue for young professional uh, simultaneously there they objected uh to the um low cost housing due to the poor atmospheres and instead they are frequently opt to uh, buy or rent affordable home uh, that offer comfortable share living space and young professional rarely mention housing choice from the environmental uh, standpoint all right that's all for my presentation thank you very much okay Okay, <clears throat> according to the schedule, the next presentation is a uh, mixed perspective, mixed uh, income housing in Nigeria and South Africa, a comparative literature review by Temitov, Olufolahan, Olaniran, and uh, Roxane Rabarinyan Jazz. Uh, uh, are they here? Are they here? No? no, because we, we haven't got any any YouTube uh, presentation, any, any YouTube video. Okay, mm. the next presentation is the interplay between special justice and housing prices uh, by Alina Haxeri and Visa Hoxha. Uh, are you here with us? Um, no? Okay, so we only have one, one presentation for the, the round table, the second round table. Uh, okay, uh, have, have you got any question for the presentation of North Sutila? Uh, okay, I, I've got a question, a question for your fantastic presentation. Uh, uh, I would like to know that according to your study, uh, what will be the recommendation to housing policy maker to guarantee housing affordable for young professional? What do you think about that? All right, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Susie. 
right? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, in in Malaysia, we we do not have yet uh, the special cohort for the young professional, because we focus for the low income, mm -hmm. and uh, moderate income. Just recently, we raised up the issue, uh, to focus for these uh, young generations, uh, affordable issue. Uh, so in my country, starting uh, 2017, uh, we rise up that, that issue for the young, for the special cohorts, for the young professional, because basically they are only focused for the different income. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, another question. Okay. Um... Okay, so we'll do yes. now the conclusion. Please. The conclusion. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. So I have just one question about okay. um, what are the advantage of the stability strategy uh, relative to uh, to the case study of the last presentation. Okay. Perfect. Can can you answer? Uh, no. All right, thank you. Uh, all right. Basically, based on uh, our study, uh, if, uh, clearly show that uh, in our country we still focus in term of the economy perspective, meaning that for the affordabilities, uh, as a uh, as a main as a point to decide uh, for housing decisions, uh, which is. Uh, environmental and social perspective is the next. Uh, so we focus for the economy perspective first. After their thought, then they will consider for the environment and social perspective. Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your answer. I think it's clear about the economic and social things about your, your case. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Another one? Okay. Uh, doctor, sorry for uh, last intervention. No. Uh, I wasn't, uh, since we have time now, we can yes. discuss a little bit, uh, elaborate about. Uh, I saw during the presentations, uh, we have uh, Many uh, research uh, uh, put the uh, affordable uh, housing or the, the, the affordable uh, building as a hub of uh, their uh, studies. But uh, what I want to ask, uh, uh, it is very important to know what does mean uh, the affordability uh, in any research, because it depends on the uh, on the standards of uh, the place. I mean, the affordability in Italy, is uh, it's not the same in uh, Algeria, for example. Uh, it, it was uh, good to know uh, the datum of, of uh, the affordability uh, in the research. I, I, I missed up this, or maybe it is uh, not clear in the, in the research. Uh, but it is one of the, I believe, it is one of the most important things to be mentioned uh, before to start to make that. Uh, what do you think? All right, Dr. thank you very much. Uh, basically, we have a lot of uh, index to measure uh, housing affordability. In my country, basically, we apply the uh, median multiple uh, index, uh, meaning that 30% uh, of income uh, uh, should allocate for the ho housing. Yeah. But in my particular study, I adopt the residual income model, which is this model. Uh, you you you, uh, if you have a positive remaining of the monthly household income after being uh, used for monthly expenses for household, uh, means that you have affordability to to pay or to allocate for your uh, housing costs. Uh, so the, in in my particular study, I apply the residual income models. Ah, thank yes. you. Thank you very much. So you thank have you. your your scale, your own scale. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Dr. Carlos. Okay. Any more questions? So, sorry, my, my Wi-Fi signer has fallen. And <laughs> okay. So... Um, you can, uh, doctor, uh, end the uh, session uh, and uh, uh, return back the host to me since okay. uh, no any... Uh, and we will uh, wait for the next uh, session. Okay, uh, perfect. Uh, yes, it will be better. So I'm uh, going to... uh, just, uh, doctor, I got, I got one link uh, of one of the presentations uh, that may I uh, provide it to you uh, and to, to start to, uh, uh, to present it. Let me try, please. Okay. Okay. Um, Doctor, I sent you the, the link. Can you uh, run it uh, from your side? Okay. Yes, I receive it. Yeah. Okay. One moment. I'm going to share. Yes. One moment, please. Uh, uh, plus, you can you uh, give me uh, some moderator because I know the I can share the my. You cannot share. No. No, it's impossible for me to share my computer. Uh, can Can you make me uh, a host? Maybe I could. Uh, you are you are the the Patreon. You are the first. Yeah, by under the name of Roxana. Yes. No, so so you you must to share the presentation. For me, it's impossible. Okay, I am the host now. Let me see yes. because they sent me this. Uh, I will try. Share uh, screen. I'm trying now. Professor Avin Nosman uh, from Navarroz University, uh, Dvok, uh, Kurdistan region, uh, with uh, Zaina Alan uh, Kader. Uh. Doctor, I think this is not uh, belong to us, but we uh, this is not a problem. We can uh, present it. Uh, okay, no, they... no, okay, perfect, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yes, I have uh, time. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll talk about enhancing and uh, upgrading housing camps and the settlement in the northwestern of Syria. Uh, this is the, the disaster chronology. Uh, we'll review the disaster from the beginning. To up till now, and uh, Syrian people has been exposed uh, from the beginning of the war uh, until uh, now to several risks uh, due to war, 
and natural disaster as earthquake. This is the map of uh, displacement people. Uh, we focus on the north uh, west of Syria because the uh, biggest amount of uh, displacement people uh, reach um, uh, 85 percentage. Uh, distribution of uh, displacement uh, people across uh, north uh, western Syria. And there are five uh, shelter types, uh, tents and finished houses. Finished houses and concrete room uh, make shift uh, shelters. Uh, the settlement uh, type uh, that uh, be emergency response and intervention. Uh, this is the uh, map of uh, cluster camps, Al Karama. Uh, the damage uh, caused by natural uh, weather factors, snowing or rainfall that um, make also uh, another um, fire flood, lack of spaces, lack of privacy. And there are urgent building shelter uh, as um, a housing complex uh, in north uh, west of Syria. Uh, they talk about some uh, projects, uh, Al Hayat Village, Lifeline Village, Hope Village, Atta Community, Al Abd Al Amal. And uh, then I will talk about uh, uh, Mulham Volunteering Team uh, Housing Project. Okay, so Mulham is one of the NGOs that is located in the northwest of Syria. Uh, after spending a lot of time uh, providing uh, tents and shelters for the displaced people, they decided by 2016 to move to providing houses complexes because of all the problems uh, Dr. Osman uh, listed in the first. Uh, today, Mulham team has more than eight pro uh, projects in northwest uh, north, north -west Syria. They are settled in Azaz because Azaz is uh, near the border, which uh, give it a more protection uh, and uh, security, uh, security uh, in compared to other regions. When they started purchasing land, they uh, they concentrated on purchasing land that has a private ownership to buy it directly from its owner. They uh, they bought uh, lands that are outside Azaz because they are more affordable in comparison to inside the sub-district. The legal situation of these houses are that the uh, organization buy the houses and they give it to the endowment, their endowment, their walkers. Uh, the houses are granted to, to, to displaced people as uh, benefit, beneficiary rights, and when their houses are more uh, are free to return, they have to leave the houses and return their, to their houses. Uh, the projects are funded through crowdfunding. At the beginning, they used uh, uh, Syrian code, but as they ex uh, gain more experience, they change to their own Mulham code. This is their first project. In fact, they are torn. Uh, they are destroy, uh, destroying this project now because they found out uh, by uh, as they gain experience that this project is not a permanent solution, rather than a, a attempt with concrete houses. So they are uh, they are um, they are going to uh, organize uh, organize an architectural competition for the architectural community to part in decision making in northwest Syria. This is their other project, Mulham Village. It has more services than the first project. It has most school and two gardens. Uh, outside is built next to the first project, Aziz, uh, and it has a school that serves the two projects. Astawasia is also built next to the other projects and it's uh, benefiting from the services in other projects. Uh, today, they have a lot of projects under constructed, like El Kod, Tamrat uh, Al Khair, and Bita Al Rahma. Since the beginning, they say uh, their vision is to create a suburban for displaced people. They uh, face a lot of challenges, like the ownership, 
uh, finance, uh, financial problem, political problem. They lacked a lot in the beginning. They lacked a lot of expertise in planning and management. Uh, today, we recommend for them. We try to write some recommendation about the situation, organizing uh, competition in the architecture and urban design uh, for uh, healthy and emergency housing. Uh, and fund uh, cooperation and link between the supporting and the financing agency to shorten time and uh, costs, uh, seeking a, a voluntary organization uh, for study and implementation, uh, keep uh, HLP uh, housing land uh, property, take benefits from uh, previous examples and experience, uh, best practice post disaster housing and uh, life food recovery intervention and unsuccessful examples, incorporating uh, study in emergency projects into the architecture uh, curriculum in the Faculty of Architecture, establishing digital architecture platform for housing projects, volunteer organization, developing guidelines for emergency housing and healthy residential complex, creating job opportunities by identify small projects. Uh, the general guideline uh, parameter of health is mean uh, uh, define the term of health as uh, um, encompassing uh, complete uh, physical, mental, and social well-being in in uh, as essential. Uh, the the current response uh, internally displaced person in uh, northwest uh, Syria. Take essential life uh, necessity, necessities. Uh, despite, um, uh, they are uh, planning uh, healthy housing requiring the consideration of specific measures and criteria. You must uh, determine uh, uh, what these uh, criteria and measures. Uh, the question how can healthy and suitable housing be secured for the displaced? And what are the conditions and uh, specific criteria, uh, specific criteria that must uh, be met in the housing uh, to be healthy? Uh, index for measuring health and uh, hygiene quality, uh, general healthy housing. Uh, healthy housing requires safety, comfort, and environmental harmony. Measure like uh, seismic uh, protection and fire preven prevention are essential. Uh, construction should um, uh, be uh, in eco-friendly material and privacy and aesthetic uh, aspects. Building orientation and the density required uh, should be considered in, in housing design. Open spaces required and important for family life. Communication should provide opportunities for uh, social uh, interaction. Uh, measures should be placed to avoid um, ambient air pollu uh, pollutants, uh, proper waste and surface water disposal. Uh, collaboration among the local uh, housing service, education, react, uh, recreative, uh, healthy and social service department, spaces, facilities, and residential environment. Uh, and uh, uh, the conclusion, uh, demographic change in Syria resulting from the war and uh, forced deplacement had uh, lead to the urgent need to uh, ensure the healthy housing complex for those affected uh, and uh, uh, establishing healthy residential uh, complex uh, uh, need. Uh, building housing units can serve uh, as a temporary solution offering uh, uh, safer alternative uh, to counts uh, for uh, displacement uh, people, but it's not a permanent solution. And 
ensuring the right of uh, life safety uh, in one's country and home is essential for every individual. Efforts should focus on establishing residential com complex that uh, adhere to architecture and urban design measures and criteria. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Um, okay. Doctor, uh, okay, uh, she is trying. Uh, Doctor uh, Avin trying to uh, to catch up with us. Uh, she tries to to enter. So if we have any questions, we can uh, we can ask her when she uh, if she could uh, enter. But generally, uh, I want to discuss something uh, about this uh, presentation, the last presentation. Uh, the uh, okay, the, the author is not he here, but we we just uh, want to to discuss the things generally uh, about the the the, um, the IDP uh, campus. Uh, you know, during the the wars or disasters, some mm -hmm. uh, temporary campus uh, are going to establish, and uh, by the time. This uh, small campus going to turn to to cities like uh, satellite towns. Like um, I I I can uh, see this especially when in in Palestine in, in north of Iraq. Uh, uh, so how how much this kind of uh, uh, development? Uh, are uh, considered by the, the the urban planners when when first they are thinking to locate these kind of things. This is always question for me because it has uh, a consequence. May uh, the consequence be positive or negative? Uh, so, but finally, this is going to change the the uh, the urban morphology. Uh, I don't know. This is just one question. Uh, pop up in my mind uh, during the presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, please, could you uh, off, uh, shut off your, your computer? Um, no, uh, I feel that uh, the, the, the problem is the same in every, in every part, everywhere, no? because the, the concept of temporary camp, uh, finally, uh, belong um, become a, a neighborhood and um, finally a little city in in, in location. Uh, here in here in Spain, we have the same problem with uh, with the construction of temporary uh, location for low income people, uh, and finally this temporary. Uh, construction finally become uh, a little neighborhood. So uh, for me, I think that if you design a, a camp, a temporary camp, think that this temporary camp will, will be or will be uh, a city in the future. I don't know who. Uh, everybody. Yes, uh, this. This is the this is a really point. Uh, it is going to 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 happen sometime. I'm thinking about this. Uh, anyways, uh, if uh, Avin is here, uh, she can explain to us uh, something about her uh, presentation. Otherwise, we, we are free to to uh, to end the session. Thank you, Dr. Carlos. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, we are going to to end the, the session with a little uh, a little summarize of, of, of the session. Uh, the main topic dealt with in this session is the problem of access to housing. We can consider that it continues to be an important global challenge, also also with different differentiated problems. In country with a strong population growth, the debate has focused on the formula of mass housing production. For example, in Africa, um, 
the paper um, was talking about the, the most suitable formula for social housing and mixed income housing. While in European countries, as our presentation, the high rates of aging force the development of new formulas that make it possible to deal with both the aging of the population and its housing. With cooperative model that also low increase in the supply of rental uh, housing. On the other hand, the high price of housing as its relationship with special characteristics must be a factor to be taken into account in housing planning policy, uh, as has been demonstrated in the case study of Malaysia. Uh, for the field of architecture, it becomes clear that architectural design continues to be a, a decisive factor in compliance with the SDGs uh, in the degree of satisfaction of each social housing user. It's necessary to continue investigating research new proposals that make it possible to address the great need of housing worldwide. With incorporation of new processes, such as flexible architecture, as in the case of Henry, or in by making a critical assessment of the production already realized, as is the case of Turkey. In any case, research on the great master of architecture continue to be an accurate source to be able to face the challenge of the future in terms of housing. Many thanks for the speaker for the magnificent, magnificent intervention. And I'll see you next year. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, so Thank much. you. Thank you very much. much. See okay. you. Bye bye. See you. Bye. bye. Good morning. Um, we have still seven minutes for the next session. I would like Hello to ask here. all. I am finding my cups. One more. Oh. If all presenters are there. Good morning, Dr. Alessandro. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you will be the, the chair uh, now on for this uh, remaining part. Uh, I wonder if you want to be a host, uh, to be able to share the, the, the links uh, by yourself. Uh, so I will yeah, make um, you host. Yes, thank Is you. Is it okay? Yeah, there's only one link uh, in, in my program, but uh, the other ones will be speaking live. So yeah, but it would be... Uh, yeah, but in case to be able to share their screen in, in case they have any problem. Absolutely. Okay, so I am making you host now. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, just don't. Uh, okay, uh, the, the the record recording is going on, so no problem. Thank you very okay, much. Thank, thank you very Good much. Good luck. Good luck. So yes, um, we can wait five minutes, but uh, if. Uh, the presenters are in the room already. Um, please let me know so that we are on the safe side that everybody's.
Dr. Alessandro, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, actually, we have one presentation that we uh, presented early uh, uh, and the, uh, the presenter was not here. Uh, actually, it, it is scheduled in your session. Uh, it is uh, under the name of, uh, let me check please, uh, uh, Enhancing and Upgrading the Housing Campus, which is the third one. I will send you the link. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, run the video by yourself. Is it okay? Yeah, you can also send it in the chat. And, yeah, uh, I'm sending fine. it to the chat exactly. Perfect. Okay. Here we are. Uh, Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Dr. Avin, are you here? Because she had some difficulties in the... Yeah, he, he's in the chat, so yeah. Okay, so... He just said hello. So means... Means, uh, okay, thank you. Hi, Avin. So in two minutes, I will start. Or maybe I can start now. What do you think? If uh, if the presenter are, uh, are there, uh, the presenters, you can start. We, better to start earlier because we don't know uh, maybe some problems happen later. Well, we have a minute anyway, just for, because uh, two presenters answered so far. So I'm not sure if all of them are here, but maybe they will come at the timing of their speech. So we can start uh, in I any way. I would say, our, yeah, yeah, let's start. It's not okay, necessary to be uh, sequently. Perfect, okay. thank you so much. Thank you, good luck. So good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the session on Habitat Studies, Infra Habitation Housing Studies. Uh, I'm going to be the chair for today's session, and my co-chair is Dr. Oliver Femi Akande. Um, we will have five presentations. The first is by me. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm a postdoc at University of Leicester in the UK. My presentation will be a green self-financing model of council housing estate regeneration, the case of Woodbury Down in London will be followed by Dr. Oluva Femi Kehinde Akande and Master of Science, Master of Science Lilian Kyoma Obi George and Master of Technology Yonam Jacob Lembi with Public Housing Project Delivery in Nigeria, Quality versus Quantity. Then we will have Enhancing and Upgrading the Housing Camps and Settlements in the North of Syria presented by Dr. Avin Ahmad Osman and architect Zina Alan. And uh, then the last two presentations will be evaluation of existing slum dwellings in urban settings to meet the UN SDG goals by bachelor architect Omkar Gund and uh, architect Manali Deshmukh. And finally, uh, PhD student Nadare Afzol and assistant professor Dr. Urie Gurdali will present Nigerian worship space based on religion culture in North Cyprus. So I will start with my presentation and I will see if I'm able to share the screen because it's always a problem. So I hope it will work out. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So yes. usually I will move on the slides this way because if I start the presentation, it doesn't work. Uh, so, but I hope it's okay. So um, what you see in this picture uh, is uh, Woodbury Down in London. It's in the north of London, and uh, it's um, very old, one of the largest housing 
uh, states, social housing estates in Europe. It was built from the 40s to the 70s. Uh, the image you see in this first picture is actually uh, the state of affairs today. Mm, the redevelopment has started 10 years ago and it is ongoing and it's very widespread. But if you look very mm, closely at the picture, you can see that there's still some of the old housing blocks. Those are these uh, long uh, brick walls ones that you can see somewhere mixed with the new cladded towers. Another thing that is important to see in this image is the natural assets of the place. These two beautiful lakes, they, these are actually water reservoirs that were built in the 19th century to provide fresh water to the city of London. And uh, that is the point of the whole project. Basically, this is a housing project <clears throat> for council homes, council tenants, which means public housing from the 40s. Uh, that raised the interest of a development company because it could be made into a green uh, redevelopment because it faces these two beautiful reservoirs. So the presentation will be uh, structured in three parts. So first I will make a very brief introduction on financialized municipal entrepreneurialism and the models of uh, self-financing regeneration like the one in Woodbury Down. Uh, then I will uh, briefly explain, uh, because at the time we have uh, the scheme for Woodbury Down, uh, which basically is based on the demolition of the old housing blocks and the construction of new green housing towers. And I will, in my conclusions, in particularly concentrate on the fact that this was a successful model of regeneration because my studies are prevalently um, interested in focusing on the social sustainability. So this project managed not to displace the long-time tenants. So this is why it is interesting. It is also interesting because it was self-financed and I will explain how this worked. So uh, first, a brief introduction on uh, financialized municipal entrepreneurialism in the UK. Um, the government in the UK has been underfunding and is investing in council housing for the last 40 to almost 50 years. And this has brought about the rise of new financial scheme for regenerating and redeveloping council estates. Uh, these include the stock transfer by which units or entire estates are transferred to so-called uh, registered social landlords, which are housing associations. They are a nonprofit. More often, what happens is private financial initiatives uh, that bring in private capital to finance council estate regeneration through public-private partnerships. And this is the case of Woodbury Down. Um, in this particular case, uh, we have a project-based self-financing model of redevelopment, which means that within the territory of the project of the council estate, the land has been leased on a plot-by-plot -plot basis to a private development company, and the regeneration is made possible by increasing housing density and delivering the highest possible number of market rate housing units so as to maximize yields. And the surplus has been used to cross subsidize the production of social housing, along of course with infrastructural improvements, greening and services. Uh, what is interesting is of course that the public benefits, in this case, the number of affordable housing provided is dependent since this is a financialized system on market forces and on the viability assessments that are conducted by the de developer. So what is interesting is that um, the developer has to build a way more dense housing complex to make for the cross subsidization of the social rent units that are existing in the development. A few words about the Berkeley Group, which is the development company that has been undertaking this endeavor. Uh, they are a British uh, property development company. They are listed on the London Stock Exchange. So they um, 
finance their operation with shareholders' funds and, of course, borrowings. Um, they are particularly specialized in greening um, regeneration efforts, uh, especially in contaminated land, but also in well-located land that has natural amenities, like the case of Woodbury Down. Just a brief history of Woodbury Down. It was built in the 40s, uh, finished uh, in the early 60s, and it contained 2,000 housing units on 64 acres of land. It was a very revolutionary estate because it was um, basically an all-encompassing city. It had the first NHS health center in the country, uh, one of the first primary and comprehensive schools in the country, libraries, churches, shops, and many other facilities. But of course, with the time by the late 80s, the council uh, was in disarray and uh, left many of the housing units in severe disrepair. And these housing units uh, uh, were in terrible conditions and many flats started to be left empty and people were leaving uh, food free down. Many of the flats were squatted and boarded up. So by the time the de development started in 2009, there were still 1,438 social rented homes in Woodbury Down. These are a few pictures that give you an idea of the architecture there. I have to be very quick. So in 2009, a private finance initiative was devised. And as I said before, the, um, um, let's say the, um, the only way to make it viable for the development company was to demolish all the existing housing blocks and to develop way more densely. So if we had around 2000 housing units in uh, before 2009, the plan was to make almost 5,000 by 2029. It would be a mixed tenure community with 41% of the new homes allocated for uh, shared ownership schemes and social rents. So the good thing is that the residents managed with their community organization to have the development company and the council sign a residence charter that provided that every council tenant had a right to be rehoused in the estate after the development. So what happened is that so far we have had a provision of, this is the figures from 2023, of 2,317 new homes, of which around 540 are for social housing. Anyway, um, in the next years, and this is uh, a table of the phases that are upcoming, um, all remaining housing tenants will be rehoused by the completion of phase five, which will be probably five to seven years from now, because the number of tenants uh, that are secured council tenants is today at about uh, 900, 1,000. Uh, in order to do so, as you can see, there is a way larger majority of market rate housing units that have been built. And that is the point. The point is also that these market rate housing units are not just market rate. We're talking about London. We're talking about an area that is very, very central. And we are talking about an area that is facing to large lakes. So these are luxury housing units. I'm coming back to this because the reservoirs that I'm explaining here in this um, picture are uh, actually what made the project successful and viable for the development company because it made it possible to extract surplus value from the provision of this very luxury housing units on the waterfront because you have balconies facing this amazing reservoir, which was renovated in 2016 and reopened after almost 200 years of neglect. Reservoirs were actually uh, contaminated by chlorine and um, there was no life. So the development company 
partner with other entities to re replete with life and uh, to re-establish re nature at the reservoirs. And today they are a phenomenal catalyst for the redevelopment of the neighborhood. And these, of course, commanded premium values for those homes that were built. But this premium value was what, man what allowed the development company to keep on constructing also social housing for the existing council residents. So this is the state of Woodbury down today. You can see it's a very hybrid neighborhood because you can see the contrast between the old housing blocks made of brick and the new towers. Um, it is a very lively neighborhood. Um, so far, uh, the retention of longtime residents has been about 90% since the beginning of the plan in uh, 2009. So it could be considered as a successful example of regeneration. Just a little table to finish this, uh, which gives you an idea of the massive increase of housing units, which is one of the major issues with this development, whereby you had 2,000 units before development, you will have at the end over 5,000 5, units. Uh, of these, 3,400 will be market rate, and 1,264 will be for social rent, but they will be enough to house all the remaining council tenants that would redown. So this is it, thank you very much. And now I have to, okay, to stop this. You should see me back again to you. Yes, thank you. And I'm gonna, um, introduce the next uh, was also the session to chair and uh, the next paper is public housing project delivery in Nigeria quality versus quantity by Dr. Ol Olubafemi Kehinde Akande and a master of science Lilian Kioma Obi George and a master of technology Yonan Jacob Lembi. So uh, I will click and share the screen. Let's see if it works out. So give me a second to share the screen. If there's anything that I'm doing wrong, please let me know because I, okay. So far, so good, doctor. Okay, cool, thank you. No, because sometimes I. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you are fine, yeah. Okay, so I'm now sharing the screen. You should see, you, you, you will see my whole screen right now, but also, do you see YouTube now? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, wait. You need to put it on full screen. Yeah. Okay. Let's start. Volume. We can hear. Give it volume. You can't hear it. Yeah. Um, so I think you need to turn on um, Dr. Alexander. Yes. Sorry. You need to share with the sound. Um, I will do it again. Yes. Just as you're sharing, just there's a sound. Uh, Click the icon of the share sound when you are uh, sharing, Doctor. There is an. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes. yes sorry. Yes. Yes. My name is Olua Femi. I'm presenting a research title, Public Housing Project Delivery in Nigeria, Quality versus Quantity. By 2025, a billion new houses will be required worldwide as estimated and reported by UN Africa. Africa's urban population is expected to reach 1.2 billion by 2050. And this has called for increase in demand for affordable housing. Nigeria, a fast urbanizing country in Africa, is currently confronted with urbanization challenges. One of them is insufficient housing. In Nigeria, there are approximately 10.7 million houses. Current housing shortfall is recorded to be 28 million units 
and we required around 21 trillion Nigerian Naira to finance the deficit. With a population of roughly 200 million people in Nigeria, just 10% of this population are able to own a house that they can afford. Of utmost concern in this research is the quality of houses being delivered to reduce the housing deficits. In our literature, we established a growing trend in Nigerian housing short form, which is identified as follows. In 1991, there was 7 million shortfall in housing, and it increased to 12 million in 2007. By 2010, it has increased to 14 million, and by 2019, it has increased to 20 million units. And we found out that literature has established that most of the, uh, the houses are majorly in poor condition. The missing factors identified in the literature, which is the housing, which is the quality of those housing in current housing delivery, is identified as the housing habitability, environmental sustainability of the housing, and functionality of those housing and socio-cultural affordability of the houses. The aim and objective of our study is presented thus. The aim is to analyze the factors impacting the quality of housing development in Nigeria. We identified two objectives here. To identify the key variables responsible for poor public housing project delivery and two, to evaluate the factors influencing housing project success and failure in the delivery of quality public housing projects in Nigeria. We presented a consensual framework as a result of our literature. Here we can see five major areas, the housing supply requirements, at the middle, the requirement of the houses that needed to be supplied to the populace, and then below it is the outcome. Now, for the housing supply requirements, we can see here that there are driven factors that is driving housing deficits in Nigeria, which is characterized by urbanization, population exposure, explosion, urban migration, urban expansion, overpopulation, and poor housing delivery. And on my right hand side, we see the housing need being driven by the low income earners, high income earners, disabled people older people, renters, immigrants, and so parent families. However, to be able to achieve sustainable housing delivery, we see here that there is need for affordability, suitability, habitability, and livability of those houses. And the role of actors in implementation of housing delivery, such as the built environment professional, cannot be uh, overlooked. Therefore, bringing the role of actors in this implementation will help us to achieve housing habitability, environmental sustainability of the housing delivery, and functionality of the housing delivery, and sociocultural sustainability of the housing delivery, which eventually will culminate into quality housing for quality living for Nigerian populace. Our methodology is presented as thus. The study area was focused on three Nigerian states, that is Abuja, Bauchi, and Niger states, as can be as can be seen on the screen. We, ad we adopted purposive, stratified, systematic selection approaches for our methods. We selected 120 houses and 235 built environment professionals from a housing stock of 2,000 and from an estimated population of 3 million people within the study area. We obtained a diverse variety of viewpoints on housing quality and housing projects and we use maximum variation sampling, also known as heterogeneous sampling, as a purposive sampling strategy. We divided the entire study area into stratum using stratified sampling method. And we determined sample size of 351, which we obtained with 3.6 response rates from the sample size. Procedure of data collection and analysis are presented thus. We developed a self questionnaire. We developed a self developed questionnaire which was used to obtain uh, data from the respondent in the study area. The questionnaire was divided into two types. One was administered for the household 
and the other one for the built environment professionals. Chromeback Alpha value were used to assess the internal reliability of the operations. And statistical package for social sciences, known as SPSS version 20, was used to analyze the data using descriptive and inferential statistics. Facing correlation tests of P is equal to 0 0.05 was used to determine whether there was significant association between the observed variables. Then we find the factor dependability, the optimal inter-item correlation need using factorial analysis for factor loading was to range between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, and we use a value of 0 0.3 in this investigation. We present our results and findings as follows. The table one presents the summary background or profile of the respondents. The respondents' level of education, professional association, number of building projects handled in over the last five years, if they have taken courses in project management and their area of specialization, their years of experience, and course of building projects that they have managed over five years were presented. The result shows that the respondents are well established professionally and they have sufficient experience to provide reasonable insight into the subject under investigation. In our result, Table 2 presents the extent of project funding, how it influences the quality of public housing projects. And our finding shows that the extent of project finance was considered to be statistically significant. When we use one sample t test value of 3.5, only two of the project funding variables affect the quality of the project, which is cost and source of funding. In table two, we present the extent of construction materials as it influences the quality of the public housing project. Our finding shows the extent of construction material is also statistically significant. And, the, and we, by using one sample t test value of 3.5, we saw that only one the only one variable has an effect on project quality, which is the quality of the material. Table 4 presents the rotated transition factors using various method in our factorial analysis. Here we see that the rotated component matrix provided a clearer view of the component loading onto the three factors that are influencing the quality of project uh, uh, housing. Um, project delivery in Nigeria. The three factors are named as one, project success malalignment, factor two, unforeseen project challenges, and factor three, excessive bureaucratic hiccups from project initiators. We conclude that there are interplay of factors affecting the delivery of quality public housing projects in Nigeria. This project de emphasize quantity housing delivery at the detriment of quality housing delivery for occupant sustainable living. Three issues must be addressed in order to develop quality housing projects, and these issues were identified to be sufficient project financing for housing, housing projects, suitable building materials to be able to have quality housing delivery, and project management expertise of the role actors, the built environment professionals that are involved. Attention needs to be paid to using high quality materials and also involving the st stakeholders, that is the big environment professionals. This will enhance the delivery of livable quality housing in Nigeria. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for this presentation and now uh we move on to give me a second oh i'm sorry because i okay um and now we move to the second the third presentation uh for this uh session with uh, enhancing and upgrading the housing camps of settlements in the north of Syria, Dr. Havin Hamad Osman, and uh, she will be speaking live. Yes.
Doctor, can you uh, run the link? The link that I sent you? My name is Olua Femi. I'm presenting a research title. Is it working? Uh, unmute your, uh, okay, okay. Hello all, uh, Dr. Avin Nasman uh, from Navarroz University, uh, Dhok uh, Kurdistan region, uh, with uh, Zaina Alan uh, Kader Hassi University. Uh, we'll talk about enhancing and uh, upgrading housing camps and settlement in the northwestern of Syria. Uh, this is the, the disaster chronology. Uh, we will review the disaster from the beginning to up till now. And uh, Syrian people has been exposed uh, from the beginning of the war uh, until uh, now to several risks uh, due to war and natural disaster as earthquake. This is the map of uh, displacement people. Uh, we focus on the north uh, west of Syria because the uh, biggest amount of uh, displacement people uh, reach um, uh, 85 percentage. Uh, distribution of uh, displacement people across uh, north uh, western Syria. And there are five uh, shelter types, uh, tents and finished houses. Finished houses and concrete room uh, make shift uh, shelters. Uh, the settlement uh, type uh, that uh, be emergency response and intervention. Uh, this is the uh, map of uh, cluster camps, Al Karama. Uh, the damage uh, caused by natural uh, weather factors, snowing or rainfall that um, make also uh, another um, fire, flood, lack of spaces, lack of privacy. And there are urgent building shelter uh, as um, a housing complex uh, in north uh, west of Syria. Uh, they talk about some uh, projects, uh, Al Hayat Village, Lifeline Village, Hope Village, Atta Community, Al Ard Al Amal. And uh, then I will talk about uh, uh, Mulham Volunteering Team uh, Housing Project. Okay, so Mulham is one of the NGOs that is located in the northwest of Syria. Uh, after spending a lot of time uh, providing uh, tents and shelters for the displaced people, they decided by 2016 to move to providing houses complexes because of all the problems uh, Dr. Osman uh, listed in the first. Uh, today, Mulham team has more than eight pro uh, projects in northwest uh, north, north -west Syria. They are settled in Azaz because Azaz is uh, near the border, which uh, gives it a more protection uh, and uh, security, uh, security uh, in compared to other regions. 
when they started purchasing land, they uh, they concentrated on purchasing land that has a private ownership to buy it directly from its owner. They uh, they bought uh, lands that are outside Azaz because they are more affordable in comparison to inside the sub-district. The legal situation of these houses are that the uh, organization buy the houses and they give it to the endowment, their endowment, their wakas. Uh, the houses are granted to the displaced people as uh, benefit beneficiary rights, and when their houses are more uh, are free to return, they have to leave the houses and return their, to their houses. Uh, the projects are funded through crowdfunding. At the beginning, they used a uh, uh, code, but as they ex uh, gain more experience, they change to their own mulham code. This is their first project. In fact, they are torn. Uh, they are destroy, uh, destroying this project now because they found out uh, by uh, as they gain experience that this project is not a permanent solution, rather than a, a attempt with concrete houses. So they are uh, they are um, they are going to uh, organize uh, organize an architectural competition for the architectural community to part in decision making in northwest Syria. This is the other project, Mulham Village. It has more services than the first project. It has more school and two gardens. Uh, outside is built next to the first project, Aziz, uh, and it has a school that serves the two projects. Astawasia is also built next to the other projects and it's uh, benefiting from the services in other projects. Uh, today, they have a lot of projects under construction, like the code, Tamrat al Khair, and Zita al Rahma. Since the beginning, they say uh, their vision is to create a suburban for displaced people. They uh, face a lot of challenges, like the ownership, uh, finance, uh, financial problem, political problem. They lacked a lot in the beginning, they lacked a lot of expertise in planning and management. Uh, today, we recommend for them. We try to write some recommendation about the situation, organizing uh, competition in the architecture and urban design uh, for uh, healthy and uh, emergency housing, uh, and find uh, cooperation and link between the supporting and the financing agency to shorten time and uh, costs. Uh, seeking a, a voluntary organization uh, for study and implementation. Uh, keep uh, HLP uh, housing land uh, property. Take benefits from uh, previous examples and experience, uh, best practice post disaster housing and uh, life food recovery intervention and unsuccessful um, examples. Incorporating uh, study in emergency project into the architecture. Uh, curriculum in the Faculty of Architecture, establishing a digital architecture platform for housing projects, volunteer organization, developing guideline for emergency housing and healthy residential complex, creating job opportunities by identifying small projects. Uh, the general guideline uh, parameter of health is mean uh, uh, define the term of health as uh, um, encompassing uh, complete uh, physical, mental, and social well-being in in uh, as essential. Uh, the para the current response uh, internally displaced person in uh, northwest uh, Syria lack essential life uh, necessity necessities. Uh, despite um, uh, they are. Uh, planning uh, healthy housing required the consideration of specific measures and criteria. You must uh, determine uh, uh, what's this uh, criteria and measures. Uh, the question how can healthy and suitable housing be secured for the displaced? And what are the conditions and uh, specific criteria? Uh, specific criteria that must uh, be met in the um, housing uh, to be healthy. Uh, index for measuring health and uh, hygiene quality, uh, general healthy housing 
uh, healthy housing requires safety, comfort, and environmental harmony, measure like uh, seismic uh, protection and fire preven prevention are essential. Uh, construction should um, uh, be uh, in eco-friendly material and privacy and aesthetic uh, aspects. Building orientation and uh, density required uh, should be considered in, in housing design. Open spaces required and important for family life. Communication should provide opportunities for uh, social uh, interaction. Uh, measures should be placed uh, to avoid um, ambient air pollu uh, pollutant, uh, proper waste and surface water disposal. Uh, collaboration among the local uh, housing service, education, react, uh, recreative, uh, healthy and social service departments, spaces, facilities, and residential environment. Uh, and uh, uh, the conclusion, uh, the demographic change in Syria resulting from the war and uh, forced deplacement had uh, led to the urgent need to uh, ensure the healthy housing complex for those affected uh, and uh, uh, establishing healthy residential uh, complex uh, need uh, building housing units can serve uh, as a temporary solution offering uh, safer alternative uh, to camps uh, for uh, displacement uh, people, but it's not a permanent solution. And ensuring the right of uh, life safety uh, in one's country and home is essential for every individual. Efforts should focus on establishing residential com complex that uh, adhere to architecture and urban design measures and criteria. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so we go on with the next presentation. Fortunately, it opened YouTube and I don't know. Okay. So the next presentation is uh, going to be evaluation of existing slum dwellings in urban settings to meet the UN SDG goals by architect Omkar Gund and architect Manali Deshmo. Um, I think they are Hello, present. Sir. Yes. Uh, uh, sir, I am unable to share my screen. No. Perfect. Thank you. Hello, sir. I'm unable to share my screen. Yes, we can see it. Did, 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 you, send can... Your, did you send your YouTube link to the uh, uh, no, program no, no. chair? Oh, oh, you didn't? No, no, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, okay but we ahead. can see it, yes. Yeah, okay, go ahead. We can, can hear you. It is coming like host disabled the participants uh, screen sharing. So I guess uh, host has to uh, give access. He, he cannot share, doctor, he cannot share uh, his presentation from his own computer unless you make him a host. Ah, uh, okay. So Can how does he intend to make his presentation? How do we see his presentation? Uh, just uh, if he has a link of a video, he can send you the link. Otherwise, you have to make him host to be able uh, to, to to share by his own. Uh, How do I make him a host? Uh, I'm trying to. Omkar, can you can you share by your own? If we make yes, you host. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Can you make him host? uh you you go to his uh, link uh, yes. you will find three three points three dots yeah. 
Perfect. And yes, go and click on that. Uh, you will find uh, one uh, uh, term make host. So yes, you yes. can make him. I can okay. share. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. On Thank car, you. you can go. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, can you see my uh, presentation? Okay, yes. Perfect. Perfect. yes, yes, we can see you now. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Myself, Omkar Gunda. I am an architecture student from Brick School of Architecture, Pune, India. So, uh, the uh, research paper uh, uh, describes that over the past two decades, urban environmental quality has declined and slums are seen as the primary concern. Despite numerous slum upgrading strategies to address urban poverty in developing countries, the issues is only projected to get worse. The lack of sustainable slum redevelopment guideline, guidelines in India is a policy gap that needs to be addressed. To make sure that upcoming housing stocks are sustainable, a logical design and planning approach is required to address the climate change and sustainable development goals. This paper focuses on the study and analysis of existing slum dwellings and their living conditions. And from the observations of the study, it aims to propose recommendation for uh, creating sustainable and sensitive redevelopment. As part of a new approach for slum uh, upgrading projects, to meet uh, SDG objective, it will also investigate the criteria required to construct climate responsive urban dwellings that are closer to net zero buildings. So home is not just a physical structure. It is a space that reflects the personalities, tastes and preferences of the individuals who live there. It is the basic need of each and every human being. As we can see, uh, these pictures depicting the lifestyle of slum dwellers in the slums formed by themselves. Now, uh, if we compare this, uh, now if we compare this and have a look at uh, the what we are providing to these people, replacing the structures built by them, built for them, a small and secluded units which has a uh, disconnect from its community and surrounding environment, which also lacks the basic necessity of light and ventilation. Currently, the expectations of the slum dwellers and reality are seen in complete contrast in cities, due to the increase in urbanization. These people are getting rehabilitated to these vertical buildings. They disconnect people from the street away from everyday interaction that occurs within the existing lanes and streets. They weaken the community and destroy the social life as the interaction within the community becomes the formal decision. So these are the three factors which affects the uh, sustainability of any uh, redeveloped projects. So imbalance of these three factors causes the failure of these redevelopment projects which causes the rebound effect. In turn, these uh, rehabilitated uh, dwellers come back to the horizontal slums. So the research question is, how can a strategic framework incorporating the identified problems and needs of informal settlements lead to long-term sustainable community development? So for the same, the uh, literature review was done. So under method methodology, after the research question, the uh, Selection of the uh, site study area was done to understand the needs and requirements of the people and currently what are they getting through rehabilitation projects. Two projects with different type of approach were studied through parameters of social and environmental aspects. After that, learnings were derived from these projects for creating framework for redevelopment projects. Based on these learnings, a project proposal is proposed for slum located in the study area. The intent of this analysis is to understand the feasibility of the currently ongoing redevelopment projects in Ambadnagar and uh, understanding the positives and negatives of the projects based on the two different types of projects. So coming to the study area, this is the map of Maharashtra in um, uh, India. So uh, in Maharashtra, uh, out of uh, three cities, Ambadnagar is one of the cities which has a uh, slum growth rate more than 11%. And currently, as per the CDP of the city 2031, the city is increasing residential land use by 18%. So talking about the climate of the Ahmednagar, Ahmednagar comes under the hot and dry climatic condition where summer temperatures reach up to 40 degrees Celsius. So these are the two uh, projects which I am going to uh, explain and compare with each other to get uh, learning from these projects. So these examples were studied and analyzed and simulations were done for checking the parameters such as daylight, insulation, and shadow analysis, etc. So the, the first case is a typical 
uh, apartment building with a core surrounded by the uh, apart uh, dwelling units so daylight analysis was done to understand uh, how much light these individual units are getting inside the units so uh, the units are getting large uh, large amount of light with extra glare inside on the southern side due to the absence of uh, the required amount of fenestration the glare can cause discomfort in the indoor spaces causing heat of the space also based on the social parameter the, uh, this form of structure is not fulfilling and satisfying the lifestyle of the slum dwellers we seen in the first slide of the slum lifestyle uh, talking about the second case uh, in the second case there are total 228 dwelling units these units are arranged in eight clusters forming communal open spaces for that individual clusters and these units are staggered forming g plus 2 buildings to analyze how much of these open spaces are shaded throughout the day shadow analysis was done the ecotech software is used for the same so as you can see the shadow analysis based on the simulation 90% of the site area is shaded by the cluster formation of buildings and mutual shading of the same and 10% of the site area receives direct sunlight throughout the day the 90% of the shade red site area signifies that it solved the issue of heat island effect overall the cluster formation has helped the buildings sh to shade the open spaces the units are getting shaded by passages in front of them working as fenestration as well as community interaction spaces as per igbc the bedroom is getting good amount of light as compared to other spaces as it is having a external wall on one side based on the daylight simulation results all the units are getting enough daylight except the some of the units in which kitchen and living are getting less amount of light throughout the through the duct as uh, they are connected to the duct the duct size is small so lower uh, units are getting less amount of light so based on these uh, case studies few learnings were extracted to apply in uh, proposal so such as uh, consideration of incremental opportunity in the units shared uh, social and public spaces designing on human scale designing hierarchy of spaces for the community community empowerment through providing them choice mixed use development use of passive strategies use of local materials better functioning buildings with sustainable services based on this the uh, design briefs uh, social sustainability brief environmental brief and economic and technological brief were uh, derived so uh, as we talked about ambadnagar city so there are currently 22 slums present in ambadnagar uh, out of which 17 slums are notified and five are unnotified slums with about 22 slums in total a proper design construction and management of the slum development is critical as it will become a model for redevelopment of the remaining slums in the city so uh, after comparing the slums and uh, comparative the, after doing the comparative analysis the slum one of the slums in the city was selected for the proposal which is a balikashram slum uh, which is uh, located in the heart of the city which is consisting of uh, two certain tenements present on the site with a, a lot of existing trees present on the site after that ob uh, observations were uh, observed on the site where uh, the social ties were connected by the trees and all the uh, existing uh, structures were located and activities happening in the site after that the uh, uh, it is observed, observed that uh, according to the sra laws the standard practice is built on public private partnership where developer participates in the projects and provides 25 square meter each tenement for free and in exchange he gets free sale component that allows him to profit from the project the disadvantage of this approach is that developer alone determines the project's quality and character he tries to fit as many units, units as he can on the allotted land in order to make the most money feasible providing free tenements to the current slum inhabitants the consequence of this sort of project is therefore a tall building with a claustrophobic living space for slum inhabitants by incorporating cell uh, component by developer the community loses its essence leaving slum inhabitants feeling disassociated so the proposed framework of redevelopment Uh, as an alternative to this practice the new framework we proposed in this proposal the community forms a housing society in which they take a decision from their themselves under the guidance of local ngo architect and municipal corporation the funds will be obtained through csr fund 
which is corporate social responsibility so after that uh, area program was developed so this is the design proposed for that specific site which having lot of existing trees and the dwelling units are arranged around that trees uh, forming the clusters creating hierarchy of open spaces for uh, dwellers to uh, have a informal uh, interaction points and play playgrounds and open spaces so as you can see uh, three options were provided for the uh, dwellers according to the their uh, condition of uh, economical condition also for cost effectiveness tractor bond machinery is proposed with a csb filler uh, blocks for roofing also there is a consideration of extra storage spaces in the dwelling units as you can see the section of the dwelling unit the uh, shading fenestration of the units uh, considered in design also the uh, st extra storage spaces on above so these are the cross sections of the uh, units uh, showing the hierarchy of open spaces uh, yes after that uh, analyzing how these open spaces are shading how much uh, of these open sp uh, spaces are shading two options were derived in which all, uh, first option all the uh, buildings are g plus 2 but uh, in this option Uh, the central open space was not uh, uh, getting shaded through, uh, fully so the sec second option was created in which the uh, so the, uh, southwest buildings were uh, converted into g plus 3 buildings after that daylight analysis was done to understand how much light is getting inside the dwelling units and based on the uh, the daylight analysis was done in two categories kitchen and living spaces with kitchen having minimum 200 lux minimum uh, amount and living spaces 110 lux minimum so all the units are getting good amount of light inside the spaces as compared to the case studies so these are the some of the conceptual views of the project having the uh, view showing the cluster view this is the community spaces these are the common interaction spaces on the um, walkways and staircases these are the front uh, commercial spaces yeah so the conclusion of this paper the conclu uh, paper concludes that slum redevelopment in india is crucial for achieving un sdg goals and creating sustainable cities and communities for redevelopment program to succeed there are, there needs to be active community involvement a comprehensive integrated approach efficient governance and regulatory frameworks and the program should be scalable and replicable with the dwelling units having consideration of future expansion and affordability in architectural design and planning for the ahmednagar context it is important to consider the climatic condition and need for the energy efficient strategies design elements such as proper orientation shading devices natural ventilation and the use of locally available materials can help mitigate the heat and maximum maximize thermal comfort rain water harvesting techniques efficient water management system and solar energy utilization can contribute to the sustainable development in the region that's it thank you uh, omkar you can retrieve back uh, the host All right. to uh, the Thank you very much for the presentation. Very beautiful project. Um, I will present now uh, Nadare Aftoil and uh, with Nigerian worship space based on religion culture in North Cyprus. Nadre, are you there? Could it be that he's not present? If she is not there, uh, doctor, we can go for the uh, discussion. If I'm going uh, just to check uh, on the list of presenters if she's there. Um, or Uriye Gurtali. I don't think they are there.
So I would say, unless they come at the very last minute, uh, since we are at 11.41, I would open up to questions and answers uh, from the audience on these uh, five uh, uh, presentations we had. You can raise your hands or write in the chat and I will um, uh, read it for you, or you can just turn on your mic and ask questions. So, Oluva Femi. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your beautiful presentation. It was really quite um, interesting. Um, I was wondering um, in the project, after the regeneration of the project, why is it that we have less um, uh, less number of um, social housing um, tenants, you know, that got the um, um, that got the housing after regeneration? It was quite small. I thought that since we're able to achieve uh, much and uh, during the regeneration, there there could be more um, social housing provided for the less um, privileged people who have access to, to housing. So uh, it, it, this is uh, the main point. So thank you for this question, because at the beginning I said 2013 by 2009, and now 2023, there's gonna be housing for 1,264. So there's almost 700 um, council tenants left, uh, less than before. This is because during the long 14 years so far of development, uh, many residents left their homes. Mm -hmm. So there has been a displacement, although what is interesting about this project com compared to many other such projects in a city like London is that displacement in this case was um, not a forced relocation, but was more of a decision of single families that just wanted to leave because of the construction. And so they decided to be given other council housing units in other areas of the same neighborhood uh, provided by the council. Uh, in other cases, uh, people who had, for instance, non-secure positions, uh, this means that they were temporary residents uh, but they didn't have a contract for social housing provision with the council. Uh, they also were left out. However, the, the reason why I talked about a positive, um, because in a city like London, usually um, so far over the last 20 years, the market is so hot and the, the real estate is so valuable that such projects of redevelopment have in many cases led to almost 100% displacement of the existing council residents. In this case, actually, there was not even one displacement that was done all, because it was impossible because of the agreement that was made be between the council and the residents organization. Um, people who left, left because they knew that this was going to take 20 years. Also, of course, when the, the housing were demolished, they had to be relocated somewhere else for the time being and then come back. And during that time, many decided, you know what, I'm just going to stay here because at this point, you know, I feel comfortable here. I think it is, a it is to appreciate an improvement and also the fact that is uh, quite outstanding that uh, the social residents basically are now living in this very, very attractive new neighborhood. Of course, this brings a lot of contradictions, but um, they, they they are living in in the, in this new modern green housing. So this is definitely for a city like London an incredible improvement. So that would be my answer. But definitely, yeah, there's been a loss because 
the development company is playing with time. The longer it takes and the more, the less social rent units they will have to build because people die, people move away, people are relocated that they don't want to come back. So they've been playing with time, definitely. Okay. Um, um, just the last question on that. Um, the, those costs of uh, those housing after regeneration, do you think it has to do with the reason why people are not, um, you know, uh, I mean, coming or attractive to, you know, the outcome, the, the regenerated, you know, houses? Do you think cost could be, you know, a factor? And not for the social housing, because mm -hmm. they come to uh, exactly the same price. Basically, it's slightly, it could be 20, uh, you know, it could be around 20 more per week, 20 pounds, but it's mm -hmm. still more or less feasible. And most of the times, this addition in cost is covered by the council. So for the council residents, they were really, let's say, privileged to have the possibility to relocate in new homes that are uh, also quite larger um, and obviously more comfortable than the previous homes that were from the 40s. Uh, so no, but the, the reason why this was possible to provide this social housing at the same cost was only because they doubled, they, they, they provided, they built almost double the number in market rate units that are extremely expensive. Nobody could afford them. We're talking properties for millions of pounds. So of course the contradiction is that in order to provide social housing, they had to cover the cost to cross-subsidize social housing by providing so much of new luxury housing. And this worked to the benefit in this case of the social housing tenants because they could move. Of course, there are many contradictions because now they live in a neighborhood that is very different from before. It's a very gentrified neighborhood uh, with many different people. But so far, uh, my investigation has been almost two years uh, uh, spent talking to people and mm -hmm. interviewing has been uh, a positive reaction. Uh, people were glad that they could stay in their neighborhood. They still feel like they're, it's their community, but of course they see the many changes. But it's interesting to see how this is a system that at least managed to grant people the right to stay where they were and yeah. not displace them. So there's another question by Mohamed. Um, yes, can you hear me please? Okay, yes. thank you at first, Dr. Alessandro and everyone. Uh, I want to take a chance because of the last session and this session we repeated about the cases in Northern Syria. And I want to take the chance, the presenters are here now. I want to take a question. I have two questions actually, if I can take the chance. As Dr. Salar said uh, about the, how the temporary camps uh, will affect at urban level, of course, due to, the, due to the fact that these uh, camps uh, will transfer to be the cities, I want to ask the uh, researchers about the what is the political role that you discussed or you approached, and is there any effect from the NGOs like UN or because they are already, I think, working with the RCOs, uh, Resilience Chief Officers. So this is the question about the last one and about the last. Uh, presentation about India uh, with the communal gardens or communal places uh, rehabilitation and the slums and I want to take the chance uh, about did he uh, engage the the informal education and the process or is there any relation relation with the thing thanks that's it for me So do you want to respond? Um, hello. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, so uh, answering to the question, uh, to before starting with the project, I had a, uh, briefly studied the uh, informal settlements and how they work, their social life, and uh, uh, how they uh, react to the redevelopment 
projects after redeveloping and uh, trans, uh, lo relocating to their, uh, them to the new buildings and how they uh, live their life in newly uh, built projects. So the study was done for the same. Okay, thank you so much. We have some more time for more questions. I think uh, Doctor, uh, he asked uh, one question to Doctor uh, Avin. Uh, exactly, then, yes, sir. Yes. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. Yes, so Doctor Avin can uh, answer uh, if you just unmute and. Uh, yeah, he might need to repeat his question for him to remember the question. Yes, may I repeat the question? Yes. I think Dr. Ravin. Okay. Dr. Ravin, can you hear me, please? I okay, think I, I hear you. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At first, okay. thank you so much. Yes. Um, I want to report the. Uh, about Dr. Salah's uh, comment about the temporary uh, camps, refugees will affect at urban level, if I understand well. And due to the fact that these camps will uh, transfer to be a cities and somehow. So um, what is the political uh, role or what the, uh, the political approach that you discuss in the in this project during to the already done project and the undergoing project that the projects in progress and um, is there any effect from the NGOs as UN, for example, because they are already, I think they are working with the, what they call RCOs, which they, the uh, resilient chief officers that they are trying to plan a good resilient uh, communities and sustainable cities in that uh, region. Thank you so much. Welcome. Um, already, yeah, it's uh, sure they are effective of, uh, uh, the camps in the old room, uh, but the problem, uh, they established uh, camps or, or settlements uh, on the agriculture land. This is the um, major uh, uh, danger of the urban and uh, otherwise it's uh, um, prevent uh, the activities or uh, opportunities of job uh, for the uh, population. Um, this is important point that make uh, maybe it's mistake or there are no other choice. So we focus to a Mulham team that uh, um, focus uh, the land from uh, their owner. This is uh, important. Uh, point take in consideration to establishing the uh, settlements for um, displacement uh, people. Uh, other other projects mm -hmm. um, um, they are uh, funded funded or it's not established. It's th they are different uh, situation from who uh, funded the, the project and who establishing uh, the project. Uh, establishing camps uh, is um, it's not a good uh, solution because it's, they, are, they um, miss uh, necessities of uh, uh, or needs of requirements of life and the other other uh, options or other idea to uh, establishing uh, housing complex. Uh, I think this is better because they um, um, don't want to, to uh, already the war make uh, um, demography changing. So they are not justifying to prevent the, this kind of project because 12 years is not uh, easy. The, the people suffering um, many, many disasters and risks, uh, natural and uh, war and uh, so uh, this is uh, an important uh, time to uh, to think about how we can 
save these people from all the uh, this suffering. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there is any other questions. Uh, I have a question, if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, thank you, Mohammed, for your uh, development of my questions. Uh, Dr. Abin was Dr. not here when we were talking about that. Actually, it is a serious problem, and we cannot uh, avoid it. The temporary become permanent, uh, uh, either we like or not. Uh, uh, but uh, the point is how to make uh, our uh, pre-decisions uh, to expect that these kind of uh, campus uh, or um, let us say <clears throat> building uh, clusters become in the uh, future uh, and uh, standing alone uh, cities and how this can uh, affect in somehow the morphology of the, the mother cities. Uh, th th this is really a problem uh, we have to think about. Uh, it is uh, uh, beyond uh, the, the, the decision of uh, one designer or uh, one architect. It needs uh, um, regulation, government uh, regulation. Uh, but this is existing and this is realistic that the temporary camps become later uh, permanent uh, cities. Um, thank you. Uh, just uh, I, I highlighted this. Uh, I have one question for uh, Omkar. Um, Omkar, you are uh, evaluating the slum uh, buildings. But uh, what I saw in your design you are uh, 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 going to develop a luxurious place. Uh, I believe in that. Uh, you are thinking, okay, you are positive. Uh, thank you very much for this. But uh, if we are uh, in the situation that we have a limited money, we have to think in very economical way and we have to um, think how uh, we can solve the problem with the uh, low cost. Uh, what I uh, remarked in your design, you talked about you talked about uh, rated right trap uh, masonry walls. These kind of walls, okay, it will uh, reduce the cost of the building, but it will have problem with the noise. This is one point that you have to take in consideration. Uh, second point, uh, I didn't see uh, the, the, the stack ventilation uh, in your uh, design, which is very crucial as far as I understand. Uh, the, uh, the climate, uh, it's uh, humid, yes, in, uh, in uh, the place that you were mentioned. Am I right? Uh, no, sir, it is a hot and dry climate. Hot and dry. Yes. So uh, in this case, uh, stack ventilation with 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 the uh, with the um, uh, greenery can um, make a job. Especially, uh, you can use the stack ventilation like a wind catcher also, because uh, the continuated. Uh, uh, air uh, in in the in India uh, the, the the polluted air always heavier so we try to go higher to get more purified uh, um, uh, wind this is my suggestions only um, uh, that was my question to you uh, Omkar yes sir thank you so much sir uh, so. Uh, as the land is owned by the slum dwellers, uh, existing uh, slum dwellers are living on that land. So my proposal was catering to uh, uh, providing solutions for them, building new uh, tenements for them. So the propo proposal is proposed on the same land, considering the cost effectiveness of the design through uh, various technological interventions, such as uh, construction, 
uh, like for uh, how can we reduce the electrical bills by providing uh, 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 efficient passive strategies uh, uh, by providing uh, uh, renewable energy on site. So these all considerations are taken into consideration while designing the project. Yes, thank you. But I, I, I like. Uh, uh, I would uh, um, advise you to to rethink about the the rate trap uh, machinery, how uh, building because it is as I said uh, will create a acoustic problem for you, especially in overcrowded area like this. Thank you very much for your effort. Uh, last question for uh, Dr. Alessandro um, about his presentation. Um, do you think, uh, doctor, this is, a, is a gentrification uh, somehow in this place? Uh, means uh, totally uh, renewing the things? Uh, can you hear me, Dr. Alessandro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can, can you specify? Uh... Uh, the, the, I mean, I mean, it is it is uh, somehow uh, 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 re-developing uh, the place uh, with the more developed and luxurious uh, uh, buildings, uh, or uh, only uh, you are going to to renew the existing buildings? Yeah, exactly. This is one of the dilemmas because. There were some studies that were done uh, that uh, um, claimed and that it could be a retrofit development, it, that, that the existing housing could be retrofitted uh, without the need to demolish and rebuild. And I do believe that it would have been obviously more cost effective um, from the perspective of the public end uh and definitely also more um you know more socially sustainable for the people because you could phase the project and have people leave their housing block maybe for a short time it gets retrofitted for instance a similar project that i studied in germany they people had to leave their homes basically for three months sometimes or a few more months and then they were already back in the retrofitted apartments they didn't demolish anything it was very much more cost effective and uh, there was no gentrification obviously because the reason why there is gentrification is because they are building new and they are building market rate for uh, rich people but in a system like the one in the uk where there is no funding for social housing anymore uh, that is being one of the few ways that are available because either people live in these housing units that are slowly deteriorating, which many would prefer because at least they would stay where they are in their community. Uh, but there's been interventions from the state that has mandated social housing to be renovated in 2001. So this was the reason why many councils found themselves that they had to do these works. Otherwise, they would be unlawful. And uh, this was done by the new Labour government. And it was very, um, it created basically a firestorm of mandated development of social housing estates because the council had to do it to according to the law and where did they find the money they, the, the the government that made this law didn't give them any money so the only way they could do it was to privatize them or to create public private partnerships like this one most of these uh, privatizations led to huge waves of displacement and I would say that these, considering that we are in London, is one of the best examples. And that is why I decided to study this because there's been a massive gentrification, but somehow basically the choice was, okay, if we build so many market rate housing units, we will be able to house, to provide housing also for all the social housing residents. And it's, they consider this to be a win-win because the old social housing residents were living in apartments that were, you know, with many problems of insulations, 
They were very cold. Mm -hmm. uh, they had mold. And now they live in beautiful new apartments. And at the same time, it's a win for the company because they make money. And then it's a win for the council because without money, they now have something that is being redeveloped without basically paying a penny. So these are the many aspects of these kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. But of course, this happens because it's London. Now, you see, like London, there's so much interest in, uh, you know, in getting all to extract value wherever it's possible because there's so many rich people that will buy in London anyway that you can do these kind of projects. Obviously, in areas there are uh, less, you know, more marginalized, there would no be, be no development company that it's definitely has an interest in maximizing values and therefore give some benefits back to the social housing people. So, but, uh, it, so it, it is a kind of a contract, contradictory experience, this of put breathe down, but in a context like London, I would say that it could be defined as a positive experience. Yeah, indeed, uh, it is a uh, optimizing project and challenging project actually in the same time. Um, yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. Um, and I think you. actually now it should be lunch break. So I wanted to Sorry. thank. Can, can uh, only I discuss with, uh, uh, hello, Dr. Salar, uh, how are you? Uh, to uh, explain some uh, points, uh, we cannot uh, do it in our presentation. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, not easy to predict that uh, the results of uh, uh, establishing these camps, uh, because many many factors, uh, poli uh, political situation or another factors, uh, but temporary camps. Uh, it's not good for for uh, any way because it's, it's the duration is uh, twelve years. It's not uh, easy. And other things that we can uh, take benefits mm -hmm. from the uh, good examples as uh, uh, when it's happened uh, uh, earthquake week in uh, the, the Sicily, uh, the architect, uh, the Italian architect, uh, Franco Borini, um, gets to to establish new uh new city near the uh, destroyed uh, uh, city uh, it's uh, called uh, Bougere Novo uh, and the other example in in Paris uh, when, uh, when they established um, a housing <coughs> unit for African people and they remove and uh, this is a, a good example I think we must take benefit uh, and otherwise they don't change the land but we don't know who control in the end in syria so it's uh, uh yeah yes thank you very much uh dr Avin. this is exactly what we said uh, we we try to predict somehow what is going to happen later and since we are in the field uh, we have to think seriously about this this is a uh, this is the, the the consequence of the of the unstable political situations. You know, uh, this is uh, uh, this is Middle East especially, but uh, be, because in the Middle East we have some problems with the regulations, with the uh, uh, the, the governments uh, the, don't uh, following exactly uh, the, the the future of the of the of the countries. That's why we are uh, thinking like this. <clears throat> Normally, if we have some uh, some disasters, we have to think permanently uh, to uh, to uh, settle the people, like what you mentioned in Sicily, in France, etc. But what we see in our countries, uh, in Syria, in Iraq, in even in many others, uh, the, the the interdisciplinary persons comes become after a while like a de facto means the, the, the city that the people is going to live uh, and um, <clears throat> interact and it, it becomes like a, 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 the body, yeah, it means a population body. And it will affect uh, the economy, uh, politi even political uh, uh, streams. This is what we want uh, uh, to mention. Thank you very much again. I'm sorry for uh, uh, elaborating in... <laughs> 
in this uh, issue. So um, I, I think we are done uh, for, for, for this session. So I would like to thank session co-chair, Dr. Oluwafemi Akande. I would like to thank you, Dr. Roxane. I would like to thank you all speakers. Uh, it's been very interesting and uh, let's have a lunch <laughs> and uh, have a great day. Doctor, can you, before to leave, uh, to make me host? Uh, again? Yes, uh, wait a second. <clears throat> Please let me know if it works, okay? Yes, okay. Did it work? Uh, not yet. I'm clicking on the three points uh, dots yeah. but so it gives me all only wait a second uh, okay. it shows here it shows here hojam that you are the host now for yes me. okay thank you very much thank you very much so it have a nice you. time see you in the uh, evening time see you later bye -bye. thank you very much bye 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 bye, -bye. Thank you, everyone. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.